This is a question from the Stowe campus, and it'll say, uh, it says, how do you respond to non-believers who accuse Christians of being hateful to people who support lifestyles that are not according to the precepts of our faith? I think this is a very important question, and they all are, really. Um, I'd be a dishonest person if I said to you that that question doesn't worry me, that I don't even think about it. In fact, we as a team, our entire team, people like Nabil Qureshi, Michael Ramsden, Oz Guinness, Amy Ori Ewing, our entire speaker's team, have often sat around the table and said, you know, how do we deal with this very trying social issue of our time? And even though the word is not used here, the idea is, you know, the, the homosexual lifestyle and all that has come about in our time, how do we as Christians deal with it? So Joe, if you don't mind, I'd like to take an extended answer in this, you know, let me give you about three panels of an answer. The first panel is the logical problem. The second panel is what I call the theological problem. And the third panel is what I would call the relational problem, how you communicate it. So let me take, first of all, the sociological issue here. What A few moments later. Your prerogatives in the I said, are we an autonomous culture? He said, yes. I said, all right, now tell me this. If we are an autonomous culture, and I answer your question, are you going to give me the privilege of my autonomy too? Or as soon as you disagree with my answer, you will switch to a heteronomous mode and dictate for me what I must believe as well. That is the sociological dilemma. Five minutes later. But you know what? And my wife will tell you this, others will tell you this who know me. I accept people with a love and a genuineness, regardless of what their view is on anything, if it's different to mine. I have learned to love humanity. I can put my arm around a person who has a different view on marriage or a different view on politics or whatever, and just say, you know, God gives you the most sacred gift, the gift of the prerogative of choice, but God does not give you the privilege of determining a different outcome to what the choice will entail. The consequences are bound to the choice. And you go right back to the book of Genesis, and it tells you, you do what is right, will not you, will you not be accepted? But if you don't, sin stalks at the, at the door, desires to have you. And so when I look at the sacredness of marriage, any change from it, from the biblical point of view, is a departure from the biblical mandate. But at the same time, the Bible commands us to love even those with whom we disagree. And our responsibility as the church is never to hate the individual. Our privilege is to love. And only God can change the heart of a person. And God is the ultimate judge. And in a pluralistic society, let us as Christians be both light and salt and learn to love one another and let God be the judge over all of us. He is the one who is pure in his judgments. We can make errors. Those are the three panels I want to leave with you. No homos will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. Never! Those hateful words are from the mouth of a Tempe pastor preaching that God's word says that killing gay people is the only way to get rid of AIDS by Christmas. He says all gays are pedophiles. He says the biggest hypocrite in the world is the person who believes in the death penalty for murderers but not for homosexuals. Pastor Steven Anderson has agreed to join us tonight for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. Pastor Anderson, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me on. Have you always hated gay people? Is it something your father taught you or is it something that you came to on your own? No, I haven't always. You know, I grew up in a Christian home, but it wasn't until I read the Bible cover to cover at age 17 that I discovered the truth of what the Bible really says because a lot of passages don't ever get preached from the pulpit because they're simply not popular. I have to be honest, when, when I heard your sermon, it sounded like the rantings of someone who was either a hate monger or a religious zealot. And I'm wondering, which are you? Well, I'm a religious zealot. And, you know, I love the Bible. I love God's word. I believe that the law of the Lord is perfect. 
And, you know, Leviticus 2013 clearly says, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with the woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. And, you know, as a Christian, I believe the Bible, and that's where I get my belief. Now, d doesn't the Ten Commandment, isn't the First Commandment, thou shalt not kill? No, the first commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, but it, um, it, of course, is thou shalt not kill a, one of the commandments? Yes, it is. But what you have to understand is that the Bible commands that certain people be put to death. Not by me, not by Christians. It's obviously not my job or the job of any Christian to go out and kill anybody. And I've never taught anything like that. But rather that the government's job is to punish criminals and to execute those who've committed capital crimes. And according to the Bible, homosexuality is a capital crime, and I didn't write the Bible. What if irony of irony is it turned out that you had a gay son or a gay daughter, would you want them dead as a way to cure AIDS? Well, that's just a fallacy that it just turns out that certain people are gay. That's just a lie because it's not random. It's, it's not something that's just going to accidentally happen to one of my how, children. Well, wait, it's, how do you think it happens then? Well, the Bible's real clear how it happens in Romans chapter 1. It talks about how God gives people over to a reprobate mind to do these filthy acts. So it, it has to do with them rejecting the Lord and rejecting Jesus Christ. And, 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 you know. and I'll ask again, Pastor, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, but I want to understand that you're a man of your word. If you had a gay son or a gay daughter, what would you do? Well, it's not going to happen. If I did, I would have nothing to do with them. That's like saying, well, what if your daughter, you know, grew up to be an axe murderer? What if your son grew up to be like Adolf Hitler? You know, what would you do then? I mean, it's just a silly question. Well, well as long as you bring up Adolf Hitler, he wanted to exterminate Jews and anyone who wasn't blonde hair and blue eyed, who didn't fit into his vision of the way people should be. Isn't that in a way what you're preaching, that you want to get rid of anyone who isn't heterosexual? Absolutely not. I'm preaching the Bible, something that Adolf Hitler rejected. He taught evolution, which is why he wanted to execute what he considered to be inferior races. But you, I, do, I don't believe you in, would like to see anyone who's not heterosexual die, correct? Well, the Bible says that I'm asking, everyone... I'm who, asking what you believe. I believe the Bible. I believe what the Bible says. And if I didn't, then I wouldn't be a Baptist. I wouldn't be a Christian you know, if I didn't it, believe it the Bible. You know, it sounds like, because you won't answer what you believe, that you're, I, I, you're I did answer what I believe. Little, I believe hiding behind the Bible. Hold on a second. I believe what the Bible says that homosexuals should be executed. Let me make myself clear. I believe that, and I've never gone back on that for one second. So every Christian believes the Bible, so or anyone, else they're not even really a Christian. If you believe that, anyone who is not heterosexual should die, correct? Absolutely, of course. That's what the Bible says. You, you hate gay people. Yes. I'm Jewish. How do you feel about Jews? Oh, I don't hate Jews. I mean, that's just a straw man to try to compare me to Hitler. I don't hate Jews whatsoever. Blacks? Do you hate black people? Because you Of said course you not. My church well, is filled with black prayed, people. Did, did, did you say, Pastor, that you prayed for the death of Barack Obama? Oh, so, so now Obama and the race card comes out. My church is filled with black people. My church is filled with all races. In fact, the Bible says we're all of one Am blood. I misquoting you? Or did you say that you pray for the death of Barack Obama? Well, yes, I did, but Obama's white. Obama's not black anyway. He's half white and half black, so just as well as you can call him black, I'll call him white. He's a white man. Some would say that just as the Taliban and the ISIS fighters have perverted Islam and made it violent to fit their vision of the world, that that's what you're doing, is you're perverting Christianity to fit your vision of the world. Well, let the viewer read for themselves. Let them pull the Bible off their shelf and look up Leviticus 2013, and then let them be the judge. Intelligent people will listen to the entire sermon, aids the judgment of God, and will pull their Bible off their shelf and read Leviticus 2013. Uh, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but did you say that if people perceive you as a, a hate monger or your church as a hate group, so be it? Absolutely. I don't care how people perceive me. They called Jesus Beelzebub. They nailed him to the cross. And Jesus said that they hated him because he testified of their works, that their works were evil. That's what I'm doing. That's why they hate me.